How can you be honest? That's bullshit. You can never be 100% honest and tell everything to everybody. Anything they ask you. As um, Monica mentioned earlier, she brought up the word white lies. You know, what, how can you be honest all the time? You have to be very stupid to be honest all the time. That's not a sign of being smart. That's a sign of stupidity. Because if you're honest all the time, you probably won't live very long or you, you cannot make it. Of being honest 100% all the time, I don't know of once, one person in my life that is honest 100% all the time. Not even a person. No one. Now, you can be honest to yourself 100%. That's a different story. Being honest to yourself 100%, that's part of your responsibility. That is your only responsibility you have in this life. But you don't have a responsibility to be honest 100% to other people. Because it's almost impossible. And I'm going to use an example. Like, it was like a few months ago, my mother comes to me and she went and did her hair. So they cut her hair shorter and, and they dyed her hair and everything. But it didn't look good. It didn't really look good. She looked much better without it. And she comes to me and says, Zaratustra, how do you like my hair? She's smiling. She's glowing. She's very happy. And I'm not going to tell her mom you look like shit. I'm telling her, I see her and I'm a little bit shocked. And I say, oh yeah, mom, you look great. You look, you look great. I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't have it inside me. I can't break her heart. She's over 90 years old. I'm not going to tell her you look like shit. Because it doesn't matter. What difference would it make? Because I, I'm not here to prove that, oh, every time I speak, I only speak my truth. Well, it is. Every time I speak, I speak my truth. My, my truth in that moment is not telling her what I feel. That was my truth. So I stayed truthful to myself, but I lied to her because I didn't want to break her heart. It was more important to me to lie to her than breaking her heart. If I told her you look like shit, I would have broken her heart and I didn't want to do that. So I lied. How about those of you who have kids? Do you always tell the truth to your kids? If you have children, you get used to lying. There are times you want to put them to bed. There are times you don't want to take them somewhere. What if, what if you get cancer and you may die? Are you going to tell your seven and nine year old kids that I got cancer and I'm going to die? and you're going for a surgery, you're not going to tell them I'm going to die. You just come, come up with some kind of story because you may not die. You go through your surgery and you'll come out. But a lot of times certain things, you know, you can't tell kids. I'm, but don't take me wrong. I don't want you to come back and tell me, well, you told us to lie to your kids. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can't tell them everything. They're not ready to hear it. They're not mature to hear it. So you're just going to have to twist it or put it differently. Those of you who, how many people here have kids? Okay. All right. Do you always tell them 100% truth? No, you can't. So, everything, it's got, you have to check in with yourself 
and see where you're at with it, especially the more conscious you become, the more aware you become, you look in here, you check in with yourself to see if it's, it's okay or it's not okay. Am I all right with this? And maybe you were all right with that kind of a behavior for years, but you're not all right with it anymore. Then you make adjustments. But one recommendation I make is no, whatever challenging situation I encounter is uh, I highly recommend you always look at yourself first. Because we have been trained and brainwashed to put your finger on other people and put our finger on government put a finger on the city, on the uh, environment, on education, whatever it is. We're putting our finger on other people. And this is wrong, that is wrong, da 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 da. So, but what I've learned is always look at myself. Always look at myself. What is it that I'm not doing right? What is it needs to change? What is it that I'm not looking at? I'm not paying attention to? What kind of unconscious behavior do I have that this situation keeps reoccurring and I need to check it out? So, um, that's where you want to start with. And not in a very analytical way, not in a way that you beat yourself up. No, just in a cool way. Just take a look and do a diagnostic check of yourself. Is there something I'm not looking at? Is there something I'm not paying attention to? Is there something I need to learn? And then you see if there is or not, if you're really honest with yourself. And then you then you can bring your attention on the other person and, and see what is it you don't like that you need to share with them. Um, I would just like to add, it's, it's, it's not that important in and of itself, but we're moving into um, the political situation for the next three months uh, or whatever. So we're all going to get bombarded morning, noon, and night. And, you know, within our family, we have different views and neighbors and friends and everything else. And which program on the TV we'll watch because of this slanted or the other slanted. I know it's not as important as um, perhaps a, a relationship with Vin, you know, has, within the family or something with kids. But I mean, we're all going to be exposed to it. So it's a great playground to practice in for all the good points you have made, you know, to remain like the observer, as it were, the witness observer in our own consciousness and listen to if it's an opposing view or even if it's the same, you know, it's a lot of chatter, a lot of wasted energy. It'll be what it'll be. And, um, and life goes on with pluses and minuses, no matter who goes in or who wins the election, there's always pluses and minuses. So it's a good right. place for us perhaps just to practice